This is David here with another video. I'm this time trying to uh, do something about the noise that this uh, cyclone makes. It's probably the noisiest item in my shop now. So I was thinking I'm going to put a wall around it with a door over here on this side so I'll be able to get to the barrel to be able to dump it out. And I will make it in sections to where if I do have to take it out to work on the cyclone, it'll be easy to come out and uh, put some type of foam on the inside of it, maybe a baffle system up here to release the air back into the shop to where hopefully it'll cut the noise down a significant amount to where it's a little bit more enjoyable to be in here with this thing running. I really love the Cyclone. It does a great job on controlling the dust. We just need to do something about the noise. All right, so I downloaded a decibel meter onto my phone, an app, We'll see what it is with the, the cyclone run, just so we have a baseline more than anything else to see the difference between before and after. Alright, so with the cyclone running, it goes up to 89 decibels. But we definitely need to do something with the noise, so the wall's going up, we're going to put some foam in it, maybe a layered system, and we'll see what that does for it. So here's the first panel, just so you can see what I'm doing on it, my, my thoughts on it. I've got 3 plywood on the outside, got uh, foam, carpet foam stuck on the inside. That keeps the uh, sound from continuing through the 2x4s into this outer layer. I'll put another layer on the inside on, across the 2 by 4s Then there will be an air space in, in between. Hopefully I don't have to pack the whole thing with styrofoam or something, but uh, I'm going to try just doing a couple sheets of this foam. I think it will probably knock it down enough, but we'll see. Uh, this upper area right here is going to be the air outlet. So I'll build out a box system with baffles in it with this foam on the baffles hopefully to knock the sound down before it gets back out to the uh, shop. We'll see how well that works. And this is the baffle box. Now really all it is is a series of partitions. So the inlet will be here. It'll, it'll come back here. Hit, this, hit that top. And then the other two panels have to go in. You'll have an intermediate panel here that'll go in, right there, and then another panel that'll go on right there. So it makes it turn twice inside the box. Essentially, everything's got to bounce around in there and turn several times. Hopefully, it dissipates some of that sound, keeps it inside the room by doing this. We'll see how well it works. And there it is, just slips right in place, should not go anywhere.
Well, what I figured out is, is that one vent over here in the side and the top is not going to be enough. When you turn on the cyclone now with the door closed, unlatched, it'll actually open the door. It'll blow the door open about midway. So decided to put just a single baffle, a single plate in front of this with about a four inch opening. Uh, hopefully that'll give it enough. It won't cause too much back pressure back onto the filters and the unit to where it inhibits the uh, airflow. We'll see. All right. All right, this is uh, ongoing. I'm trying to get the uh, noise levels down. Uh, the outside shell, this is built. It was built in panels so it can be taken down uh, easily. But uh, in doing so, I tried to use some different materials on the inside. It be, uh, wouldn't have all the fiber and everything coming off of it. So I used some uh, regular carpet padding and uh, styrofoam on the inside. Especially two inch styrofoam mats. And I've still hard plywood all the way around it. And that reflective sound that I'm getting off that plywood is part of the problem. So I decided that I'm going to end up putting some other type of sound absorbing material in there. Also, the one vent over here on the side that's got the baffles in it was not enough for the amount of air that's coming out of this filter. So I had to leave this open right here. Right now it doesn't have a baffle in it, so that's contributing to the overall reduction in sound, or lack of it. Right now I'm seeing about five decibels reduction from what it had. It had 89 to 90. I'm seeing about 95, uh, which is not enough. So I decided that I was probably going to go get some mineral wool. Well, that Home Depot. They also have another product here called Pure Safety. Uh, big difference here between regular mineral wool is mineral wool is going to give you a higher uh, uh, break as far as heat is concerned. As, 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 as a fire break, it's good to like 2,000 degrees. Uh, essentially, thermofiber would be their brand. I was looking at this and looked up the SDSs, the uh, safety data sheets on both these products. And the pure safety actually had a higher coefficient, actually a much higher coefficient for sound reduction than the mineral wool thermofiber did. So this is what I decided to go with. I'm going to essentially line the inside, not the door. It's actually inside of the walls on the inside of this to see how much better I can get it. I'm probably not going to do the uh, ceiling because it'd just be hard to get to. I don't want it falling down onto the top of the motor and maybe limiting the airflow on it. But uh, I'll do all the walls and I'll have to do something with the baffle system here. Because most of the sound I'm getting out of here is really coming through this open, this open compartment over here at the uh, side. So here we go. All right. I figure I'd give you a look, quick look before I put the barrel in and do the test of uh, what I did, I installed the uh, insulation in here using just strips like this. Some of them I put uh, screws in. Most of them are just wedged in there from uh, under, underneath the batting on the opposing walls. And it holds it in place and then holds the other wall in place. And then on the very back wall, I used a lot of these uh, just little flat plates with a screw. And uh, so everything's held in. I'll give you a quick look and then I'm going to put the barrel in and we're going to do a test. So the only thing that we have, <clears throat> we've got an opening that still could be an issue would be this vent across the front here and I'm going to have to make some type of baffle assembly for it, but we'll see what it does without it. 
All right, so we've got the closet completed. Uh, figured I'd go over some uh, do's and don'ts, some learnings that I had from this experience and everything. Don't see where it was any value at all to uh, put the carpet foam in between the outer shell, the plywood, and the and the studs. I don't think I really got all that much out of that. Uh, maybe a little bit, but it was it was minimal at best. Uh, for the time and the effort and the cost, I would probably admit that if I did that in the future. Styrofoam, it does give you some, but it is it's minimal. Uh, it's still hard on the outside, so it allows the uh, sound to uh, bounce on the inside of the uh, closet. If I was to do it over again, I'd make the closet a little bit bigger so you had some room to get around in, in there, around the cyclone. Uh, that would be advisable. So I'd leave at least leave a foot, foot and a half. So I was trying to keep it from coming into the into the shop space. I probably should have just bit the bullet and let it take a little more of the shop space up. Did not put any type of sound ending on the ceiling. That really should have been done beforehand. Like I said, I was trying to stay away from the the fiber wool type of insulation one because it'll tear you up and itch it so bad did not know about this new type of insulation uh from uh owens corning and it, it seems to work quite well it's not itchy it cuts easy uh it doesn't it's not friable you don't see all the fibers flying through the air like you do with the mineral wool so i'm really happy with this insulation and it seems to stay up real well. So just a quick review uh, before we started this project and everything of enclosing the cyclone. We were at 89 to 90, mostly 90 decibels. Now the decibel chart's not completely linear. Uh, if you look at it, you know, generally about 50 to, to 60 decibels, that's normal talking range like we're at right now. Uh, when you get up to uh, 70, it's like a lawnmower, uh, and, and of course, uh, anything 80 and above. At 80, it's kind of like an action level. If you eight hours or more, then you should be having ear protection. This one was at 90. Uh, Miss to say, we didn't get it below 80, so you know, hearing protection is still needed. But that was didn't figure we were gonna get we were going to get out of that range anyway, but. Uh, when you look at it, the elevation between 70 decibels and 80 decibels, 80 is two times greater than 70, and then 90 is four times greater than, than 70. So just the drop between 90 and 80 decibels is a, is a huge gain as far as uh, quieting down the shop. So well worth the effort, and uh, I'm just going to let you hear hear the differences in that now. Thank you. 